One ten millimeter. <laughs> now that we got the squares out of here, let's talk about the new Lomography 110 camera, the Lomomatic 110. And when I say new, holy crap on a pita, do I mean new because my friends at Lomography let me test out the prototype. Now, a little quick context for you. I've never actually shot 110 film before making this video. Well, that's not entirely true. I did shoot one cartridge of it, but it was so heavily expired that none of the shots actually came out. So these two are my first successful cartridges of 110 film. How successful were they? Well, I'm sure you won't hesitate to let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you're saying to yourself, 110 film, what the hell is even that? 110 film was introduced in 1972 by Kodak. It's smaller and has a lower resolution than 35 millimeter film and way less resolution than 120 film. Much like a Game Boy Color game, it comes in a cartridge. It's easy to load and it makes me think of those little ink ribbons that let you save your game in Resident Evil. But enough about that, how does it look? The first cartridge I shot was black and white and I'm not gonna lie to you, I kinda scuffed it. Oh brother, this guy stinks! There aren't a ton of keepers from this one. It seemed like my shutter speed was consistently a little too slow. Shots living in the Northeast where I haven't seen the sun in like six months. That paired with me not being used to such a small bean of a camera wasn't really doing me any favors, but more on the feel of the camera later. Despite these not being shots I'm in love with, all too many times on this cursed platform do I see camera reviews where the dipshits don't show any photos. So there you go, these are my photos. Don't say I never did anything for you. <laughs> Plus I got a few that I really like. I love this portrait of Corey. This shot is definitely a little creepy and I like that. And this one, very nice. I am also happy to report that I got my shit together for the second cartridge. And I gotta tell you, I'm really content about that because the color film was so punchy and fun. I'm really in love with it. Overall, you gotta expect a lot of grain in this format. If grain isn't your thing, 110 film is not for you. But that's absolutely fine with me because the heavy grain is probably my favorite part of this format. While Lomography did give me this prototype camera to test out, they aren't seeing this video beforehand. These are my unfiltered opinions on the camera. After really reflecting on this experience and putting my thoughts together for this video, I've run into a couple of dilemmas. The first dilemma, this thing is so small. That's what she said. <laughs> Now I know what you're thinking, that's kind of the point, point. and yes I agree, but if you've been following this channel for a while you might know where this is going. This is a personal preference thing, but I typically don't really enjoy smaller cameras. I couldn't get down with the Olympus XA despite how beloved that camera is. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like, uh your opinion, man. I had a tough time with the size of this camera. Maybe it's due to my big meaty claw. Some of my blurry shots were definitely because I just wasn't getting a good enough grip on the camera. And I'm being fully transparent here. That was absolutely user error. I am not one of those people who loses in Super Smash Brothers and then says, well, it's because I didn't have my wave bird, you know? It is also kind of easy to finger the lens, especially when shooting in portrait orientation. Uh-oh, uh-oh, sound the alarms. We got, we got a thumb, thumb alert, thumb, there's a thumb in the frame. This is a very casual and fun camera. It's perfect for shows, parties, travel, it fits in your pocket, it's super portable, it's super fun. Just tell them to remember which pocket they put it in. Ah! But the setup of the camera isn't exactly streamlined for that style of shooting. If I'm watching my friend's band play and I want to shoot casual, fun photos of them in the crowd, I really don't want to be thinking about my settings, I just want that point and shoot experience. You need to set the focus, you need to toggle between the day and night modes, and while you can preset these before shooting, you need to be conscious of doing it. Otherwise you're gonna get out of focus photos. Not saying that I would ever make a mistake as silly as forgetting to set focus, not me, I would never do that. Ah! I do love the ability to fully customize all these settings, but doing so takes time. Playing with the buttons and dials and thinking about the settings is one of the things about film photography that I truly love. Please don't get that confused. But slowing down and fiddling with all these switches seems antithetical to the in the moment quick point and shoot vibe. And the final version of this camera has rule seven printed on the back of it, which is be fast. It's kind of a funny observation. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and call this camera Streetlight Manifesto because it's somewhere in the between. Here's a quick techie specy run down has a glass lens, which is obviously not important and is meaningless, just ask Polaroid. 
it. He's a monster. It's a 23mm lens, and the design of the accordion style body makes it so that you can't lose the lens cap, which is great for people like me. You also open and close the camera body in order to advance to the next frame. It's a satisfying motion, and it's very fun to fiddle with. This camera has auto shutter speed, which ranges from 1 30th of a second to 1 250th of a second. It also has a bulb mode going up to 30 seconds. Though there isn't a tripod socket, so don't expect to get up to any astrophotography or things like that. The day night switch toggles the aperture between f5.6 and 2. 2.8 respectively. The camera uses a zone focusing system with a four-way switch toggling between 0.8, 1.5, 3 meters, and infinity. It's easy to load. You just drop the cartridge into the back of the camera. The film door was a bit stiff to open, but I'm assuming that was because it was a prototype model. My favorite part of this camera was definitely the onboard flash. It just screws on, and apparently in the production version, you can drop gels into it. Very cool. But I found myself using that flash a lot more than I expected. The camera itself is unquestionably gorgeous, in my opinion. That orange getup is perfect. Makes me think of old school NASA. Fun fact, whenever I do an expedition in No Man's Sky, this is the getup I dress my traveler in. Unrelated, I know, but I really need to emphasize how much I love this paint job. There's also a chrome version. Not as exciting to me, but still cool. The production model looks far more sleek and sexy than the prototype I used. Despite my gripes with small bean cameras, despite my dilemma with the point and shoot versus slow down mentality, I find myself thinking about this camera more and more. I find myself thinking that I wish I could have shot one more cartridge, that I could have had better timing and taken it to one of my friend's band shows or something. So this might not be my last time dabbling with the Lomomatic 110. I can't exactly put it into words, but they did something right with this camera because I I just, I want to play with it more. If you like 110 film, you got to give this one a shot. Huge thanks to my friends at Lomography for letting me try out this camera and hanging on to it for more than two weeks. I appreciate you dealing with my uh, shitty schedule. Thank you for watching. Smash that subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye.